again. Today I thought I'd do a little video about camera lenses. Now there's already a lot of videos on YouTube about camera lenses but I don't think they address the depth of field issues and I thought I'd do a little tutorial, a little chat to talk about camera lenses. Now we all know what a camera lens does. It allows us to enhance the image in front of us, basically. You can zoom in with uh, a zoom lens, such as that, or you can use a wide angle lens. Difference between a telephoto lens and a wide angle lens, especially telephoto lens, allows you to see things far off. Wide angle lens allows you to see things more in front of you. Basically with a wider point of view, which is basically like that. I um, wanted to talk about lenses in particular in terms of uh, the uh, depth of field. You may have heard that being talked about before. What it basically means, depth of field means, how much is going to be in focus in front of you and behind your subject matter. Um, this can be achieved by having a small depth of field. What that means basically is you have an iris on your camera lens which is like that. What depth of field means basically is you have an iris on your camera lens. Now the more you close the iris which we call f-stops um, the more depth of field you get in your picture and the more you open it up the more light you get into the lens the, uh, the less you get in focus in your foreground and background and that's what depth of field is so when someone talks to you about f8 which is uh, basically quite small basically um, what they're referring to is an f-stop on a lens which means how much is going to be in focus in the foreground and background. Typically an f8 will get you most things in focus um, and that's more or less what depth of field means. Um, and depth of field ranges from 1.8 which is a big really big hole like that in your lens in terms of the aperture and f16 or f32 is very small letting very little light in now you might think well I want everything in focus in, in the background and foreground so best thing to have is a small hole you know the smallest uh, aperture that you can get which is Probably, yeah, that's absolutely right, yes, you want as much things to be in focus as possible. The only problem you've got is camera shake. Because when you uh, line up a picture on an SLR, which is uh, you know a big camera that most professional photographers use, um, which gen generally means single reflex camera, um, what what it means is um, is you're going to have to have a very slow shutter speed, which it could be three seconds. Now, I challenge anyone to hold a camera and not get any uh, camera shake on the picture at those speeds, unless you're using a tripod. Um, so most people in general like to have a, a in between. So you might have f8 and then you might be running a, maybe a hundred thousandths of a second in terms of shutter speed. Um, and that's what most people tend to do. So it's up to you what you want to be in focus and what you don't want to be in focus. It's actually useful sometimes to know what's not going to be in focus because you might want certain things not to be in your shot and to be fuzzy and not be in focus and then using depth of field will help you because you will know what sort of f-stop you'll want 
So, for example, if you were taking a picture of, I don't know, a friend, and there was someone nearby that was, you didn't want them to be in the shot, rather than them not being in the, in the frame at all, you could use something like um, 5.6 stop, stop point, where only maybe a few meters in front of your friend would be in focus and everything in front of that point would be out of focus. So, that's more or less how depth of field works and how you can use it to your advantage. Um, you can get some really big lenses that have got apertures going all the way up to 2.8, 1.8. Um, those tend to be macro lenses. Um, um, basically depth of field goes out of the window when you use those lenses because they're designed to, for wildlife or for uh, close-up shots and basically they try and get the image you've got in focus when you see um, a photographer with a big lens he might be a wildlife photographer that, that camera might only be able to do a 5.6 f-stop or 2.8 but because the the aperture is so big they're not going to get much in focus in front of the subject and behind the subject and that's what wildlife photographers in particular want to do is they want to have just that wildlife fo um, animal or bird in focus and nothing else so nothing dis distracts you from looking at that particular image and that's what makes a brilliant wildlife photographer because he knows what to get in focus, when and how and that's the key to photography knowing how to use your your knowledge your information that you know about cameras, lenses, apertures, shutter speeds all these things come into play when you take a picture so whenever you're going to take a picture of something think about how much depth of field you want to use do you want everything to be in focus in, and, and if you want everything to be in focus and it's a bright day you can probably get away with f16 and f8 however if it's an overcast day and it's very dull and very dark you're going to be struggling to get all those things in, in focus that you want to get in focus just remember whenever you're taking a picture um, shoot to your lighting conditions Try your best, by all means, but don't always rely on uh, your camera's automatic settings. Rule of thumb for me is if it's dark, open your iris up, open your f-stop up a bit and try and get a higher shutter speed. Some people can shoot at very low shutter speeds because they've practiced with the camera. So if you're a new person into f photography and you want to do wildlife photography practice holding a camera until your arm aches and do it again and again and again. Eventually your muscles in your arms will strengthen and you will be able to hold the camera at lower shutter speeds than other people will and that's the key what you're trying to do is get a happy medium between shutter speed and what's in focus. That's called depth of field. Um, and the more you practice that, the more you'll become a, an accomplished photographer. So whenever you have a problem, when it's depth of field and it's getting dark, open your iris up, let more light in. Sometimes you may have to shoot at a slower shutter speed but that's the art of photography, knowing what to do and when to do it. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, talk about is autofocus and manual focus. When when it when it's the problem with autofocus is when it's dark, it struggles to focus on your subject, and if it's if time is important to you, trust yourself. 
trust manual focus trust your knowledge trust your names experiment don't rely on auto focus if it is important that you get something in focus and you need that picture right use manual focus all the time because you're in control personally I always set my camera onto manual and I basically played around until I got my settings right it's very important before you do take photographs to basically get a rough idea of what settings you can get away with in the available light so take some practice shots before you start looking for things to photograph and trust me you'll do better and not only that settings try different exposure settings and try and uh, experiment it's always a good idea to get 10 pictures of the same subject matter with different exposures just so you get that one picture that you can use photography is all about numbers the more pictures you take the, the, the better your chances are you'll get a good picture that you can use and when I mean a good picture I mean a picture you can use and sell to a magazine that's what you're looking for as a wildlife photographer in particular um, so remember these things and you'll do well mm -hmm.